Guppies can get sick from infections, diseases, and parasites. There are diseases that they share with others, there are ways to recognize them and treat them. Being a responsible guppy owner means learning the different illnesses, prevention, and how to treat them. Luckily, there are ways to prevent this. Number 1. White Spot White Spot Disease is a very common problem in freshwater aquarium fish. The disease is caused by the commonly called ick or ick. Fish infected with ick typically develop small, blister-like, raised lesions, white spots, on the skin and fins. White spot not deadly if treated in time. The white spots you see on your guppies are actually cysts caused when the ick parasite burrows into the skin of the infected fish. The most important thing you can do to prevent ick in your aquarium is to quarantine new fish. If you want to treat guppies for ick without using chemicals, other methods, such as adding salt, increasing water temperature, and changing the water are also used by fish hobbyists to treat ick infection in an aquarium. There are available also anti-ick chemical in online seller. Number 2. Fin or Tail Rot Fin and tail rot is one of the most preventable diseases in aquarium fish. The root cause of fin rot is always poor water conditions. It's caused by bacteria but is treatable and easy to prevent with proper tank maintenance. Fin rot can be prevented with good water quality. Feeding fresh food in small portions and maintaining constant water temperature. Water change regularly. Treatment. Do a 100% water change. Take the affected fish out of the tank. Placing him in a separate tank with clean, fresh unchlorinated water. In short place him in hospital tank. Some hobbyists used common treatment like aquarium salt, antibiotic medications, antifungal medications. The infected fish treated separate way to avoid infect with other. Number 3. Red blood spot. This is a fairly easy disease to detect because of the red coloring that should easily be seen. The red blood spots on the stomach or body of guppies. This may be due to increased ammonia and nitrites levels in the fish tank. This disease can also cause a loss of appetite in them. Maintain good water condition. Avoid overcrowding your guppy fish tank to prevent such issues. Isolate new fish before adding to your guppy tank. Perform a major water change of 50 to 60% to drop the ammonia level. Place your sick guppy fish in a hospital tank. Run antibiotic and antibacterial medication by consulting a marine vet. There are also some antibacterial fund in online seller. Perform a treatment until your guppy fish again starts eating normally. Usually it will take 4 to 5 days for your guppy to recover. Number 4. Dropsy. Dropsy disease where guppy bodies appear swollen due to excess water or fluids in the body cavity and tissues. The fish have bloated stomachs that give them an oval shaped belly. Dropsy is also known as swollen belly disease or bloated disease. Prevention is better than cure. It is not hard to prevent your guppy fish from dropsy. Start with good maintaining a clean tank. Do regularly water change. Avoid overcrowding. Don't overfeed the fish. Treatment is not easy. Move sick fish to a hospital tank. Create a salt bath by adding Epsom salt to the hospital tank 1 teaspoon per gallon. Feed fresh, high quality foods. Mixture of fish food and antibiotic like chloromycetin or tetracycline. Monitor their progress for 7 to 10 days. If after 10 days of treatment, your fish shows no signs of improvement. Or if it becomes worse it may be that the cause of dropsy is not bacteria. Number 5. Fungus. White cottony growth is found on the fins of guppy. The discoloration of scales and fins and tail is an added sign. Make sure your tank and the water inside are clean. Weekly water changes will help prevent water contamination. The first thing I always recommend is a thorough cleaning of the aquarium. Scrub the glass so that you can easily see the fish's condition. Clean out your filter. Poor water conditions are a common cause of fungal infections. Some hobbies recommend used medical medicine and salt. It's important to note that just because you are adding salt does not mean
You get to stop doing water changes. That will still be important for your fish as you heal them. Number 6. Pinhole. This is a tiny puncture that occurs where the tissue is stretched the thinnest. They are very commonly seen in the dorsal and quadal fins. Blowout is a term of a breeders and hobbyists used to describe a small hole or tear in the fin tissue caused by spreading or flaring of the fins. Pinholes are very minor tears and usually require no special treatment. They typically heal naturally within a couple of days. Or other way to fix these is to slit the fin and let it heal. If you are noticing frequent blowouts or thinning of the fin tissue and suspect that it may be the precursor to bacterial fin rot, Begin by testing your water parameters and increasing your water changes. Number 7. Bent Spine. The three main things that will cause your guppy to have a bent spine are tuberculosis, scoliosis, and swim bladder disease. A bent spine in guppies is almost always the result of either scoliosis or fish tuberculosis. It's an untreatable condition. The triggering factors of fish scoliosis is inbreeding, bad diet and unhealthy water condition. Sadly, there is no cure for scoliosis but it can be prevented. Avoiding inbreeding is essential with a balanced diet. Spacious aquarium, live plants, and fresh water every week also being highly beneficial. A balanced diet would consist of high-quality tropical flake or pellet mixed with a live or frozen diet of foods such as bloodworm or brine shrimp. Number 8. Fish Tuberculosis Tuberculosis is caused by bacteria called Mycobacterium. The first sign of this disease is the lack of appetite, followed by hollow belly. Tuberculosis can be passed to other fish if they consume the dead body of the sick fish. This disease can also be passed to the offspring. There is no effective treatment for infected fish, so prevention through the use of quarantine and disinfection protocols is critically important. Tuberculosis in fish cannot be treated easily. Dead fish should be removed from the tank immediately. Fish that are presenting symptoms should be quarantined and treated with neomycin, canamycin or isoniazid antibiotics. If there is no improvement, sick fish should be euthanized to avoid the spread of infection. Number 9. Camelanus. Camelanus worms are common internal parasites in aquaria. They target many fish species, including goldfish, mollies, angelfish, and guppies. The camelanus worm is a small parasite that requires a host to grow. This worm is problematic primarily because it's difficult to discover its presence. Especially in the early phases of the infection, the worm will feed on the host's blood, sucking in vital nutrients and depriving the victim of the much-needed vitamins and minerals. There are some ways to lessen the chance of camelanus worms contaminating your tank altogether. Avoid feeding your fish worms, feeder fish and crustaceans. Quarantine any new fish for at least one month. Before introducing them to your tank, camelanus worms can only be effectively treated by adding finbendazole or levamisole mixed into the food. Number 10. Anchor Worm Anchor worms dot are not actually worms but a freshwater crustacean copod parasite that embeds into the fish's skin and has a worm-like tail that sticks out of the skin. The head of the parasite is under the fish's skin and has an anchor-like appendage that holds it in the skin. The best way to prevent anchor worms is to inspect or quarantine new fish. Manually remove anchor worms by pulling them out make sure to swab the wounds left behind with something like methylene blue or salt. 